Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love, and we are reading from Isaiah chapter 3 and a whole bunch of other scripture. We'll start right now. We're going to start from verse 1 on Isaiah 3. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the men of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable men, the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. Verse 5, and the people shall be oppressed every one by another. Everyone by his neighbor, the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable. Verse 6, when a man shall take hold of his brother of his house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing. Anyway, I'm not going to read that. We'll stop at 5 and we'll skip all the way down to, hmm, this is crazy right here. This is a listing, basically, of pride. Just pride. Let's picture the word pride. Because we're going to cover uh, what pride, lying, dabbling in the occult, and, you know, just a few things that we do in life that we don't realize, that so some of us don't. And the, the mishaps. And the title the Lord gave me for this message is Maniacal. Now that's not a word we use all the time. But that kept going back and forth in my head all evening last night. Maniacal. Hmm. I will deal with that word afterwards. But I want to read this scripture. I just wanted to give you a little wet taste of what this is going to be like. All right. And it says, verse 16, and don't look at it as female, look at it as the people of God. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion, this is verse 16, the, the, of the same chapter we're in. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks, and wanton eyes, walking with, and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord shall smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. That's called exposure, y'all. Mm -hmm. Wait for that to start happening in the near future. Big time exposure. Okay. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their cows and their round tires like the moon. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers and the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings and the rings and the nose jewels and the changeable suits and of apparel and mantles and the, wi and the wimples and the crisping pins. The glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be a stink. <clears throat> and instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girdle of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. And her gate shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate, picture this, shall sit upon the ground. I always picture when I read that verse right there. <clears throat> I always picture a grown up sitting on the ground with their legs parted, wallowing in self pity, in total despair, hopelessness, nowhere to go, no solutions to grab a hold to, just sitting there in the midst of their desolation, in the midst of their devastation, just lost, lost in it all. All right. But God has an encouraging word for his people. We're dealing with the word real quick because I've got a lot to say. And I'm trying to keep this as condensed as possible. 
Psalms verse 30. Mm, mm, mm. <clears throat> Here we go. Verse 4. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Verse 7, the Lord, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to the O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down into the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Now, this is what I want to say. For God's people, expect the best. Expect the blessings. Expect God's goodness to manifest itself in, in your lives. Expect that. But for those of you, mm, 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 for those of you who are playing tiddlywinks, Russian roulette, who are going through all kind of changes, playing games on both sides of the street, talking out both sides of your mouth. Mm -hmm. As my husband used to say, talking out the side of your neck. You're going to find out that God is not a plaything. He's not a play toy. He's not a flunky. He ain't stupid, y'all. He knows what's up. He knows what's in your heart no matter what you say out of your mouth. He knows what's in you even when you think you're on the right path. He knows. And this is, this is what God shared with me between last night and today. We're entering into a season. This is what I would refer to as a dangerous season. This season is the kind that will have an extreme of everything. You will see extreme levels of violence, crime, all kind of things happening from people to people. You will also see leaders. You will see people maybe that you've worked with, people in politics, people in governments, people in hierarchies, wherever, and ordinary people. Because I believe there's a wave coming. And the wave is a tsunami. And the tsunami is that of the maniacal. That's that word again. The maniacal is extreme and violence and turmoil and confusion. It to the extreme. It comes from the word mania. And you know what mania is basically saying. Everything's going crazy, y'all. Pandemonium. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. You never know what's coming. But those of you who are walking with the Lord, get as straight as you can, please. Because you will be protected from the times to come. You'll be protected from the waves, from the weather changes, from the climate changes, from, from the, 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 short, the shortages, the things that are going to happen. God will have you totally covered. He's got your back. He's got everything about you. He's got you. But for those of you who are half-stepping, for those of you who God would consider a hypocrite, mm-hmm, because that's the word he gave me. For those of you who lie to yourself, God, and everybody else. For those of you who misrepresent. For those of you who oppress others, who mistreat others, who abuse others. Mm -hmm. Who disrespect people in public. For those of you who are playing games on other people's lives. Who are using people. For those of you who are full of pride, arrogance, 
and self-love. Selfie, selfie, selfie. I love me, I love me, I love me. Yes, I'm a selfie baby because I got it all going on. And everybody else is messed up, but I got it together. Watch the arrogance. Watch how you think of yourself more highly than you ought. Be careful with that. Because there's a wave, a tsunami coming. That's going to sweep a lot of the unexpected folks that think they're not doing bad things. But their heart is wrong with God. And pride is one of those things God hates. And many people who don't even know it, calling themselves born-again Christians, are full of pride. I mean the stinky kind of pride. So, what the Lord shared with me, and I'm going to just break it down in everyday English, and then I'm going to read Daniel 4. I'm going to tell you the story. Jeanette confirmed it so beautifully during our service. Pat was saying she almost preached the sermon. People are going to be losing. Watch, watch what goes on around you. People are going to be losing their minds. People are going to be going crazy. Some of them won't know their own names. Some of them won't know where they are. I'm telling you. Some of them are going to start acting so bizarre. And you're going to wonder, what's wrong with my kid? What's up? What's going on? Yeah, there's going to be some stuff going down. It's not going to be pretty. And there will be a lot of people that you don't expect that will fit that picture toward the end of this chapter where they'll be sitting on the ground. Just sitting on the ground. Just won't be able to do anything about it. Now, that's why you have to be careful how you treat people, how you relate to God, the things of God. I don't care if you don't believe. Have respect. Be careful. Because some of you will come to believe him later. He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold, not lukewarm. So be careful. Get out that lukewarm phase. Because that's where you're really in danger. He can grab the cold and heat them up real quick. He can keep the hot good and hot. But you lukewarm, he'll spew you out of his mouth. That's what he says to the church of Laodicea. Be careful. Don't be caught up in that, in, in that arena. Now, there are times, I'm going to share this movie I saw. Because I like to bring everything down to human terms. And it just confirmed what I was getting. It was a psychological thriller. And I, the reason I like those. One, one reason I'm always fascinated by the psychological. By the tricks the mind can play on a person. The other thing that, that gets me is. How people can be in the middle of something. And have no clue what's really going on. Now, in this movie, and I'm not going to tell you the name because I don't want to ruin it in case you're going to see it. It's a very familiar actor. He plays the role of a young man who is in a small town and all these crimes start happening. And he basically publishes something and someone comes and accuses him face to face. With a threat, by the way, of plagiarism, which means he copied the man's work. Now, during this whole thing, it's very suspenseful because every time you get in a dark corner, you think the man's going to come out and attack him and hurt him and all that. But this is what got me. The man, he spoke differently. He looked different, looked like a little country bumpkin with a, an old uh, hat on his, a weird looking hat on his head, almost like a Quaker hat. And he was tall and lanky like, like, like Abraham Lincoln kind of. And he was on this man's case left and right. And the man was steadily saying, I wrote this myself, but he couldn't figure out why word for word the pages matched. He couldn't figure it out. You get to certain points and the sheriff is, 
asking around because now they have this crime spree where people are actually getting murdered and they're be and they're disappearing and they don't know what's going on so they're thinking you know this guy's thinking is the guy who's threatening them you get to the, a certain point I'm sharing this for a reason this part of the message stick with me on this please this is the, the game the mind can play on you when you allow yourself to open up to demonic stuff, to anything that opposes God, when you say things like, I did this, I took that class, I'm the one that did the studying, I'm the one that did the double time, I'm the one that earned that money, I worked for the money, God didn't do it, I did it, I did this, I did that, I held the family together, I worked uh, day and night to keep the family together while you beating your wife. You gotta be careful. Because what ends up happening is you're opening yourself up to things you don't even know. Playing with crystals, with tarot cards, the, the occult, watching witchcraft movies. Thinking it's fun because it's got some comedy mixed in with it. Yeah. Letting your kids watch demonic cartoons and, and supernatural, mystical cartoons. You better watch that. Now, this is what happened to the man in the movie. Back to that movie. It turns out that there was another person that there were two men that died. And he found them. And when he found them, the man who accused him of plagiarism came up and said, I took care of them for you. Now you go take care of them for me. Bury them. Get rid of their bodies. Because if you don't, I'll do this and I'll do that. So the man's intimidated and scared and he buries the bodies. And he gets rid of the car. I guess he throws the car in the lake, whatever. Check this out. At the end of the movie, we find out when his, his ex-wife, and his ex-wife's future husband comes around. We find out that the man is him. He's got a dual personality going on. There was never anybody else. There was never plagiarism. There was never a man with a funny looking hat and all that. He wouldn't bought a hat. But it was a hat he owned. And once he put that hat on, he became that person. He talked like the person. He walked like the person. He acted like the person. And he killed his wife and his wife's future husband. And then once he buried the bodies and everything was said and done, he was happy-go-lucky from that point on. He was back to his normal acting self. But he never knew until that moment that all that was going on was by his own hand. The whole time. Now that let me know that God is warning. When when I saw that, and I saw a lot of of what the Lord was showing me in Scripture, that confirmed to me, and the Lord dropped in my mind that word maniacal. That and I looked it up. It showed me that God was saying. There's coming a wave of the maniacal. There's coming a wave of extreme violence, sick, crazy, bizarre killings, bizarre tortures, bizarre insanity cases just sudden out of nowhere, and people being possessed by the demonic. There will also be crazy forms of sickness that come out of nowhere. Like the man who went blind because he was playing games with God's people and God's stuff. See, there are things that happen to people's lives suddenly. It's not always the devil, y'all. Sometimes it's God's hand. See, God says, I create good and I create evil. Now, I want you to hear in Daniel chapter 4 what the Lord has to say. This is a story. I'm going to let his word tell the story. And this is a king who was over Babylon. Who, is, who became very prideful. Mm -hmm. And he started singing that old song about how I did this and I did that. and I, These are my accomplishments. Well, check it out. Daniel chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 1. 
Nebuchadnezzar, the king, unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are the signs, how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourished in my palace. And I saw a dream. Now, this dream made him afraid. Now, I'm going to talk, talk through this part. The dream made him afraid and he tried to get everybody to interpret the dream, but they couldn't until they got to Belteshazzar, which is Daniel. All right. And Daniel goes and gets the interpretation, of course, from the Lord. And this is what he says. I want to I wanna give Daniel's story because he's retelling it anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, verse 20. The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. In other words, there's plenty of fruit, under which the beast of the field dwelt, upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. Is It is thou, O king, thou art grown, and become strong. In other words, the tree represented King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. Thy greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven and thy dominion to the end of the earth. Warning to all those who were right smack dab in the middle of your blessing from God. Just because God put you there, just because God could keep you there, doesn't mean he's obligated to leave you there. You get the fat attitude and the wrong disposition, and God knows how to bring you down in the New York second. Forget the minute. Go to the second. In the blink of an eye. All right. Woo! Verse 23. <clears throat> Whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it. Yet, leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it wet with the dew. Mm-hmm. With the dew of heaven. And let its portion be with the beast of the field, till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. Now Daniel's getting ready to interpret this bad boy. And this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. In other words, he gonna eat grass like a cow, choose the cud. And they shall wet thee, and the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. In other words, you ain't the, the, the head one in charge, baby. God is. He gonna make sure you're convinced by the time you get through being out there acting and eating like, a, like an animal, and looking like one. All right. Wow. Verse 28. No, verse 27. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off the sins of thy, by thy righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. You know what? Check this out. A lot of times, you, you know, we see the politicians, they're stalling and they're holding back the help from the poor that need it the most. And they're taking care of the rich. There's going to come a time, y'all, you're going to start seeing this one being committed to an asylum, that one being out in the middle of the street. And just all kind of weird, bizarre behavior because they have held back the help from the poor. 
God is not playing about that kind of stuff. He says, after that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. And down the end of verse 27, showing mercy to the poor. It's very important to God how we treat one another, how we treat the masses. There is no race. There is no culture. There is no group that you have the right to mistreat and destroy just because you got the money, the clout, and the power. Just because you got position. Just because you just don't like those people. You don't have that right. And God will take your mind or take your child's mind. He knows where to hit you where it hurts. A woman knows where to kick a man if he attacks her. Right there in them little private parts. Boom! And he'll scream like a little sissy. God knows where it hurts in your life. He knows where your jugular vein is. He knows where your Achilles heel is. He knows where your funny bone is. It ain't too funny either. He knows how to draw that evil out of you. He knows how to make you wake up and smell the coffee. Because, see, you can say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, till the cows come home. But it's not the only thing that brings change, that brings repentance, that will make you behave and straighten up and fly right like God did with King Nebuchadnezzar is godly sorrow. And unfortunately for some of you, godly sorrow comes through pain. That's why the Bible said, beat them, they won't die. Some of y'all never spank your kids. And you wonder why your kids act like animals in a zoo. Mm -hmm. Because you have taught them through the, through the abstaining of, of discipline that there are no prices to pay, no consequences. And then you have a hissy fit when you watch your child spend half their life in prison because they were doing stuff thinking they could get away with it everywhere else. After all, they got away with it from you. These are things you got to be careful of how you handle things in life, how you handle people. People that are your employees. You going on vacation every other month and you browbeating them about getting the business going and making money for the business, but you're not paying them any more money. They got kids in the hospital. Are you helping them out? No. You making them work part-time because you don't want to give up any benefits. You want all of it for yourself. God sees and he knows. He's not a patsy. He's not blind, he's not deaf, and he's not stupid. All right, so understand there is a wave, and I want to say it again because that's the main point of this message. There is a wave. Now, Luke 11, and I'm just going to talk about it, talks about how when the, the house is swept and garnished, that means the person who has asked God for forgiveness, they're swept, they're clean. Here's another consequence of that mess. Swept and clean. And what happens? The devil comes back and says, uh-uh, I'm in torment. I got to get back in my house. So what does he do? He gets seven others worse than him. Mm-hmm. And if that person is a sitting duck for the enemy, guess what? His condition will be seven times worse than it was before he was delivered the first time. So you be careful with your attitude. You be careful how you feel about what God's doing. You be careful the words you say out of your mouth. Don't, don't complain. Don't say what God ain't doing. Don't lie on the Lord. Don't speak against his word. Be careful about that. Don't mock God's people. Don't mock this whole thing called salvation. You be careful. Because while you're, on, you know, sitting on your high horse, making all them big bucks, and you're laughing at these poor, sorry, pitiful pe people looking for a pacifier, guess what? God's got something for you. It ain't going to be a pacifier. And everybody's going to see it. 
Because what word did he use? Exposure. He'll pull up your skirt, show the world your private, your private parts. You hear me? Your private parts. He will expose, expose, expose. Be careful about that. See, God isn't playing. There's a, there are seasons of judgment. Just like the weather changes. Seasons of judgment. Winds of adversity. It's called, if you sow to the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. Be very careful about that. Be careful. If you're good to God's people, God will be merciful to you. If you mistreat God's people, some of you have saved wives, saved husbands, saved kids. You slap them, you punch them, you kick them, you mistreat them, you down them in public, you have total contempt for them, you make fun of them, you mock them, you steal from them, you use them, you abuse them. And you think God is blind to it. What did God's word say? Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. That's very serious to God. Very serious. The Bible says, He that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. So sometimes you got to be careful how you do people. I knew a young lady years ago. She got her hair done for free for years. Why? The hairdresser. I knew the hairdresser. She was a born-again Christian. And she said, I'm going to do your hair. Since you're going to college, I'm going to do your hair for free. When she graduated to get her degree, and somebody put some money in her hand to pay a hairdresser to do her hair, did she go back and bless that hairdresser that had been doing blessing her all that time? Nope. She went downtown to Hollywood somewhere, got her hair done. Got ripped off. Her hair fell out. She had all kind of problems. Had to go back to the original hairdresser who had been doing her hair for free. And expected another freebie to help take care of the damage that was done by people she should never have taken her money to. All the money went to the people that were strangers. And the person doing all the work all those years didn't get a dime. That's the way we do each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like she wanted some big time Charlie to take care of her hair because she wanted to look like a movie star. So she goes to Hollywood Beverly Hills. Yes. Gets a hundred and fifty dollar hair job. That money should have gone to the hairdresser that had been investing in her year after year after year. So what ends up happening? She suffered a consequence. She suffered loss. Damage. It wouldn't have happened if she had taken that money to the hairdresser to knew her hair. She was a very good hairdresser. I couldn't figure out why she would go somewhere she didn't know. Just because it had a big name. But that's what people do. They use the people and abuse the privilege and then go and fork out the almighty dollar to folks they don't even know who haven't invested a nickel in their life. That's what people do. That's my own little personal gripe. So, you know, we have to be careful how we do people. We have to be careful. All right. <clears throat> and a lot of you guys, you, you know, you think that, that people who invest in other people's lives are supposed to do it for nothing. But you ain't going to work for nothing. <laughs> All right, that's an aside. I had to, you know, that's a little dig from me. That's my little personal dig. It's not from the Lord. Okay, let's move on. So, for those of you who are walking with the Lord, those of you who are living, who are loving God, who are a blessing from, who are, are being blessed by God, who are living and walking, not only the straight and narrow, but you're pursuing his heart. You're pursuing his desire in your life, the destiny, the purpose he has for you. You're pursuing it. Guess what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things shall be added unto you. He'll take care of the extras if you take care of the basics with him, in his way, in him, about him. Hmm. You hear me? Be encouraged. Weeping may endure for a night, 
Because everybody is subject to this world and its problems, including God's people. But God delivers us out of them all. So weeping may endure for a night for those of you who are going through right now. But remember, joy comes in the morning. And know that God's got your problem right in the palm of his hand. Be still and know that he is God. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Be encouraged. God's working out the kinks. He's working you out as well. He's putting things in you and pulling things out of you by what you go through. And God's basic tool for doing that is life. Life in its vicissitudes. Yes. Anyway, God bless you. Be encouraged. And for those of you who heard that word of warning, be warned. Mm -hmm. Be warned. Keep your eyes open because you're going to start seeing a whole lot of insanity. You're going to start seeing a whole lot of bizarre and crazy crimes and murders. You're going to see a lot of weird stuff going on. So be weary, be careful, be careful on the road. People will black out and something will tell them to run into somebody. Keep your eyes open. Just be careful here. And the other reason for you being careful is those of you who are walking with the Lord, you pray this prayer. I, com I command all evil to stay as far away from me as the east is from the west. You know why you say that? In the name of Jesus. Because... Satan will try to send all kind of interference. He'll run interference. He'll block you. He'll hinder. He'll put up obstacles. He'll do whatever it takes to stop you from living out what God wants you to do in, in, in God's calling. And the reason he's doing that, that happens in the book of Acts, where one of the guys was putting up, he was blocking the disciples from getting to this man who wanted them to come and bring the gospel to his house. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. When you're seeking God, be ready for the attacks. But remember, you have authority in the name of Jesus. And nothing can by any means harm you. But you got to use your weapons of warfare. Ephesians, read Ephesians chapter 6 for those of you who are going through. God bless you and God keep you. Amen.